Hello. I'm back again with another video in the sex abuse uh, series. And so today we're looking at the issue of being put on the relationship reserve bench and relating that to being vulnerable to sexual abuse and abuse in general and this is number 17 and I wanted to make some points regarding the uh, reserve bench as I call it the relationship reserve bench which is well replaced of uh, by someone who wants to keep their options open by someone who wants to build up a store of attention whereby they have attention waiting for them elsewhere whilst they go out there and they see what else is on offer and therefore they have a little reserve uh, that they keep topped up by various people, new people they meet and they are drawn in in the initial phase of seduction through various means, uh, generally through the normal dating process, if you will, which may be just one or two dates. And then they're potentially placed on a reserve bench where they're waiting. And they're waiting patiently. They believe that they're in entering into a relationship with this person and that this is normal behavior to just have to wait around maybe for a very long time until the person returns picks them off the bench and makes use of them for whatever uh, could be sexual use and then they're put on the bench again and a lot of people don't realize that it's, a, it's just a convenient way of actually having a reserve stock of people that they can draw upon whenever they want to. So they might just offer a text or, or an email or something. You might get a call. But it's just a general hooking backwards and forwards to where you're used conveniently at the convenience of the person rather than actually engaging in a full-blown relationship, which is, of course, involves a lot more than just being placed on a bench. So I wanted to um, emphasize the fact that all this going um, backwards and forwards, as it were, can leave the person um, very hungry. And that's often the purpose as well by those who do this activity deliberately, once you're put on a reserve bench where there are many other people waiting, you tend to get very hungry because you're not actually being given any substance. You're given the odd text or phone call, but there's not actually any moving forward in the relationship. There's no progression. You're just given these little tidbits every now and again to keep you on the hook and to keep you believing that there's a relationship progressing whereas you're just putting on hold you're sat there on the bench waiting literally for them to return and every time they return it's like intermittent reinforcement then that reinforces your belief that you're in a relationship whereas they're just returning to um, give you a little crumb of attention to keep you on hold so that you don't get fed up and you don't go away. But, <coughs> excuse me. So when you become very needy and very hungry, you also become quite desperate. And that's understandable. That's not abnormal. You're going to want to be given more attention because you are not being unfaithful, you're being faithful to this person who may be just going off and having other people anyway, but you're becoming more and more hungry because you're sat on the reserve bench. 
And um, whilst the other person is getting their needs met elsewhere potentially, you're becoming more hungry and therefore you're opening up to more abuse because when we are hungry, we become more vulnerable and when we become more vulnerable, then we become more needy and open ourselves up to doing things that we wouldn't normally do. And it's because we're trying to fill up that emptiness within us. And sometimes we compromise our values by becoming um, overly sexual, giving um, sexual preference to people who really haven't earned it because they haven't done anything. They haven't done anything of substance. All they've done is they've dipped in and out of our life, giving the odd little bit of attention just to keep us on the hook. So we become vulnerable to abuse. So when we, if we do sleep with someone in that situation, it can be uh, abusive in terms of us opening ourselves up to giving more of what the abuser wants because we're hoping that that's going to hook them in to us rather than seeing what the situation is in its entirety. I'm looking at the big picture rather than just focusing on the times when they come back and give you a fantastic time and then they disappear again until they're ready to pick you up again off the bench. So we become more needy when we're plunged into this uh, period of abstinence of not receiving any attention, no affection, no um, positivity, no affirmation. We become open to abuse. Some people know this. They know that when they come back, you're going to be so grateful to see them that you're going to be willing to do a lot more than you would do normally. And then at the end of the day, you start to hate yourself because you're actually giving yourself away to someone who you know doesn't deserve it because they're not giving you anything and they don't love us because if someone really loves us, they want to be with us, they want to contribute to the relationship, they want to support us, they don't want to put us on a bench where we're waiting and we're becoming needy. So I wanted to relate that to, um, it's quite a common practice these days to use, there's so much attention out there which we can get so quickly with social media and what have, what have you, but it opens us up to potentially uh, abusive and dangerous situations whereby we could be wasting years of our lives on situations that are only there for the other person's convenience, but where we're getting stuck dry waiting for someone who is very complacent and has absolutely no intention of having a relationship with us. So as always, stay safe and yeah, very happy. Bye-bye.